to Common Sense TV. I'm your host, the doctor of common sense. You know, we've been talking a little bit about TD Jakes over the last month or so, and some of you TD Jakes fans is upset, and it's just really got me really, really upset. Yes, I'm so disturbed about that. But I have a video just to prove my point again that T.D. Jakes is not anointed, he's not a bishop, and he's a false teacher. Because he decided to anoint two fellas who just butchered the Bible even worse than Benny Hinn. One is called, I think it's pronounced, Lova Elias and Pasha Java. They're supposed to be the grandsons, spiritual grandsons and sons of official Noel Jones. But it's obvious if you look at this particular clip, because I'm going to play the first clip of T.D. Jakes placing his hand on their head. They're on their knees. I don't know why they're on their knees, but they're on their knees. And he's placing his hands on their head. And then I'm going to show you some of the clips of these fellas butchering the Bible. And you're going to tell me if Bishop T.D. Jakes has real discernment. It's so obvious he doesn't. Take a listen at T.D. Jakes anointing them. You'll notice when the camera flashes, Noel Jones is on the left-hand corner right there. So we're going to throw him in there because he's another false teacher. I know y'all don't like me. Now, he's supposed to be like the, uh, the, the prince of preachers of the United States. It's a joke. He butchers the Bible just like his grandson and spiritual grandson. Now, it's his spiritual grandson and his son. These boys don't know nothing about the Bible, but take a listen. T.D. Jakes is doing that, and we're going to show you some clips of these fellas butchering the Bible. I pray that a special anointing will rest upon these your servants as you have sent them out into the vineyard to work in the heat of the days. I pray, God, that you will cover them and protect them and guide them and keep them. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, my bishop. Yeah. No, sir! Not me. Stupid. The first clip I got is the Lovey Elias. Now, <laughs> you almost gotta find this funny. I mean, I guess it's possible, but we know he's full of it. It's BS. You know it is. I got the little doc junior here, or the little doc of common sense. He knows this is BS. What you think about that little brother? I think it's BS. Yeah, he thinks it's BS too. That's right. See that head shaking? Getting that cool, got his lab coat on and everything. That boy is sharp. Look at the head. That nigga, yo, head butt you, boy, and get you out of here. Put his head into you. But let me let you listen to the first clip of uh, this fella saying he remember when he came from the hospital. Was he two months, two days old? He can remember though, because he's a prophet. Funny. Yeah. I remember when I was taken from the hospital when I was born. I don't know how I know, but I know it. <laughs> I it's BS. They made it up. To make things even worse with T.D. Jakes being a false bishop, who's definitely not anointed, because nobody who's anointed would be possibly anointing these fellas. But when T.D. Jakes is butchering the Bible too, might as well let these fellas butcher the Bible. Now, the one fella's going to get upset because you're talking about T.D. Jakes he said, you created a grave error when you criticize somebody and call them a false teacher or something like that. I'm calling you a false teacher, clown. Everybody acting like this clown know the Bible. This boy is so biblically illiterate, it's not even funny. I'm going to let you listen to him saying that you cannot say anything bad about T.D. Jakes because you created a grave error. And then I'm going to let you hear him call Jesus a liar. Now, I can't talk about T.D. Jakes, but he calls Jesus a liar. Because what he's saying is that Jesus is technically not the door. He's a porthole. I don't know what kind of spiritual mysticism that he's talking about. But I'm going to let you listen to him and then I'm going to come back and explain what he actually said. Because I don't even know if he knows what he's talking about. Everyone who makes a mistake today or anyone that people misunderstand, their first order of day is to call them fake false and call them a deceiver but many of you don't understand when you label somebody something that they are not in the sight of god you have committed a tremendous crime 
because remember papa in order for you to be a door you also have the ability to unlock it yeah because portals work like that they are not like human doors yes that's why the lord jesus said i am the way what is the way the truth and the life the way is a portal yeah is not saying i am the road so jesus yes. is not the door is not the door he is the portal is the portal no sir not me the ignorant fool wrote such a thing so don't don't believe that stupidity Understand the biblical illiterance of this fool. All you have to do is go read the Bible because I got the scripture. I'm gonna let him say it, and then we read it, and it's obvious he don't know what he's talking about. Now, as far as Jesus being the door and the way, you can understand he don't understand any biblical principles whatsoever. John 10 chapter, if you start at the seventh verse, it says, Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man's enter, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pastures. The thieves cometh, but to kill, steal, and destroy. I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. See, that's how you got to read stuff in context. See, the door means that you cannot get to heaven without the uh, uh, trusting in Jesus as Lord and Savior because he's the door that opens up your kingdom to get to heaven. If there's no way to get to heaven without going through Jesus because you're not good enough to get to heaven. He's saying that Jesus is not the door. He's a porthole. This boy is a fool. And the stupidity of his ignorance knows no end. But he wasn't finished because I'm going to let you hear another clip of him. And the things this boy said is so ignorant, it's not even funny. The next one is him talking about Ishmael. Now, whenever he quotes something, all you got to do is go read it because he takes it out of context, everything. Another one I'm going to let you hear where he talks about uh, that he says that Adam didn't name any, any animals. You go read it, it's the opposite of what this fool said. But the first one, let's do the Ishmael clip first. And... But I want you to be reminded that T.D. Jakes anointed these fellows who's so biblically illiterate, which must mean that T.D. Jakes is biblically illiterate, which must mean that Noel Jones, the ones they call Prince of Peace, are uh, biblically illiterate. Now, when they say he's the Prince of Peace, they're actually comparing him to the Prince of Peace who's from UK. You may have heard of him, Charles Haddon Spurgeon, but you listen to Charles Haddon Spurgeon, he don't butcher the Bible. You'll never hear him butchering the Bible like this. These fellas butcher the Bible regularly. But listen to this one about Ishmael, because he's really, really profound. What about Ishmael? Ishmael is the brother of um, Isaac. When his mom and him were escaping, or they were running away, and they were in the desert, his mom prayed and prayed and prayed. God never responded. But the moment Ishmael prayed, immediately an angel came. Does, does the text really say what he's saying the text says? Genesis 21, first of all, it never even said Ishmael prayed. He may have been over there weeping. It doesn't even say that. If you read it in context, he's drawing a conclusion in it. Because the text reads, uh, Genesis chapter 21, verse 16 and 17, And she went and set her down over against him a good way off, as it were a bow shot from, she said, Let me not see the death of the child. See, this is her saying she don't want to see her child die. And she sat over against him and lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the lad. It didn't say he was praying. He heard the voice of the lad. He could have been crying. The angel of the Lord called to Hagar out of heaven and said unto her, What aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God had heard the voice of the lad where he is. See, he's over there weeping because I guess they're out of food. But God heard the voice of Hagar, if you ask me. But he, it gets worse because now he's going to say the next one, and I'm going to finally get to the one where he says that uh, you can't really believe. He's really saying you can't really believe what the Bible's saying. But the next clip, he says that uh, Adam never named any animals. It's a mis misconception that Adam ain't named any animals. Well, let's listen to him. Listen to me. Anyone who tells you Adam named animals, he lied to you. Adam never named a single animal. 
The Bible says the opposite. It says that when God sent animals to Adam, he watched to see what he would call them, not what he would name them. A bullshit? A bullshit? A bullshit. I remember that T.D. Jakes anointed these two fellows. Anybody with discernment can see they don't know what the hell they're talking about. But let's read Genesis for ourselves. Genesis chapter 2, starting at verse 18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. He called them. The name that he gave to them, he can say he said call or name, but whatever name he called them, that was his name. That was the name. That's what the scripture literally says. Adam called every living creature. That was the name thereof. How are you going to say God never, uh, Adam never named any creatures when it says it right in the text? But that's not even the most outrageous thing this fellow has said. He goes on to say it's one of the biggest lies that's ever been told. If somebody says that it doesn't line up with scripture, it's not true. He says that's a lie. It's almost hard to believe that anybody, all these people are sending this man money. All these people are saying that he's a prophet. It's laughable that anybody believes anything any of these fellows say, including T.D. Jakes. Because these are the people that T.D. Jakes associates himself with. Now, when you listen to them do their little preaching or whatever, you'll notice that they don't really stay in the scripture. Because whenever they go into scripture, they butcher the scripture. But they like to just skip around and tell anecdotal stories. They don't go precept upon precept because they want to stay away from the word of God. But here's him calling, saying, really, you don't have to believe what the Bible says. I'm going to make a statement that some people are not going to like, but I'm going to tell you the truth. That's all right. Say it, say it. The biggest lie you are ever told mm. <laughs> is that if it doesn't line up with scripture, it's not from God. Mm. Wow. That is the biggest lie you are ever told. Yeah, Teachers. Yeah. No, sir. Not me. Right, none of it's true. None of it's true. It's BS. They made it up. Anybody that says Anybody should have been done with him after that, right? He says the biggest lie you've ever been told if it doesn't line up with scripture, he says that uh, it doesn't line up with God. So in other words, scripture is not important to him. Why listen to anything he's in? So in other words, he's putting himself above the word of God. And T.D. Jakes anointed this particular fellow. No, Jones, another false teacher, false prophet that you people believe. This is his spiritual son or his spiritual grandson. There seems like there's nothing they won't make up. He's worse than Benny Hinn. He actually had a video. He was with Benny Hinn, too. I'm not going to even play that one. But I am going to play another one. What's funny about this is that he's cold busted. There's a fella who he says, because I'm going to let you hear both clips. First thing he says is that nobody can cast out demons better than he can. He's the best in casting out demons. And then he turns around and says, after he says this, I have a video clip of him literally trying to cast out demons out of this, some young man, but I found another video clip of a woman casting demons out the same man. This dude is an actor. You can't make this up. Listen up him saying he's the best demon exorcist out there. And then the fella he cast demons out Another, quote, prophetess supposedly cast demon out of the same fella. Looks like actors to me. Now, right now, I'm saying it before God. I know myself, especially in this nation. Can nobody cast out demons like me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is true. I am not saying the other people are not casting out demons. They are. They are being used by God. But I know my spiritual level. No, sir. Not me. I know it. Right now, I'm saying it before God. I know myself, especially in this nation. 
Father, I would is... have been. <laughs> when did you enter here? I want to ask you again. Swallowed up. Fire have you ever Yeshua. been swallowed Fire up? Fire have you gone through a time of swallowing where everything was burn. overwhelming and you uncomfortable for you? Begin to burn. No, sir. 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 No, that just like Benny Hinn has been called lying many times, T.D. Jakes anointed this fellow. I want you to forget that because some of you says I shouldn't touch the anointing as if a uh, bottom feet of T.D. Jakes it, it, it knows anything about spirituality whatsoever. Woman, they are loose. He needs to lose that homosexual spirit out of himself. Talking about who, have you ever been swallowed? Have you ever been swallowed? Now, let's not forget that these two fellows that T.D. Jakes, a quote, anointed, are the most, I mean, Benny Hinn and Kenneth Copeland, it seems more spiritual than these fellows. I think he's from Kenya, if I'm not mistaken. This lovey Elias, I think he's from Kenya. I don't know if the Passion Java, just the name in itself is obvious, Passion Java. The hell does that even mean? He's passion jobber. But I do have a, a, another clip of these, uh, this, this individual, and it just seems like there's nothing that will not come out of their mouths. It is nothing that he would not make up to say, because he's just making it up as he go along. He don't even really believe the Bible. But now he's going to talk, talk to tell you something about, I guess he's counting in relation to the Catholic Church. No offense to you Catholics. But Peter having the key, right? He says that, another, I guess he got the key too, because Peter got the key, he got the key. And you got to get the key from him to get into heaven. <laughs> so Jesus being the way and the door really makes no sense, because technically Peter and this fella and some more of these fake prophets, they got the key. But none of these niggas ain't got the key. I'm going to tell you that right now. They ain't got no key. <laughs> if they got the key, I don't even want to go. If they giving these fake teachers the key. Now, it's obvious that Peter was a founder and, and, and one of the ones that Jesus used mightily. Nobody can. He was an apostle. But don't you miss, mix up these two fellas for being the damn saint. Because these fellas, you'll never see Peter butchering the Bible, contradicting Jesus. But listen to him talk about keys. So anybody who wants to get to that level, mm. you don't go and pray. Find the guy. Find him. Mm. So you can never, but this is the so key. If you want the keys, you don't look for the keys. You look for Peter as the key. Yeah, <laughs> Peter himself is the key. Mm. I got one last clip I'd like to show this fellow. And this one is just as worse as some of the other ones, if not worse. Because now he says that if you want an answer from God, you don't go to God and ask him. You go to the prophet. In other words, he got the keys, he's the door and everything else. God ain't going to talk to you without talking to him first. What kind of blasphemy is this? That I need to talk to him. What if you mix up some of what I say? I want to talk to God myself. Because when he died, and it's Good Friday, by the way. When he died, they said the veil of the temple was ripped in two, right? I don't know if you know what that meaning of that is. That means the doorway into the Holy of Holies has been exposed now. And you can go in boldly, the Bible says. But not according to this fellow. According to this fellow, you got to come see him first. See, this is why I never believe in people telling me they're going to confess to a priest. I tell that priest a damn thing. The priest needs to confess. Why would I let the priest sit here and tell me, go to God for me? What if he forget what I asked him to tell God? I can tell God myself better than he can tell him. He ain't feeling my pain. How does that even look? You in pain, you're going to go tell somebody else. Well, you need to go down here and, and tell the Lord I said this. No, no, no. Because he's not going to tell it to you like you say it. Why is the Bible talks about the, the prayers of the saints? It don't say nothing about I need to come talk to you before I go talk to God. But this arrogant, fake teacher that T.D. Jakes anointed said you need to come get with him first. It's, it's God responding to humanity, but through a prophet. Mm -hmm. The answers that many people want from God is not in God. It's not with God. It's with the prophet. Mm. How ignorant is that? ignorant fool who wrote such a thing so don't don't believe that stupidity don't worry if you 
have read scripture any kind of way. Hebrews 4 and 15 says, For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted, like as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace. I don't need you talking to me. It said I can go boldly into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. If you go over to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 18, it says, For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Why do I need to talk to you about it? It says I can talk. Because when you indwell with the Holy Spirit, what Jesus was saying, you must be born again. Once you indwell with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit can tell me what to say. Why well, I need to talk to you about it? This is the arrogance. I just wanted to prove a point of T.D. Jakes again, Mr. Bottom Feeder, Mr. Touchdown, being a false teacher by even anointing these clowns. They don't know about the Bible. And, and, and he, he, he's the one, the lovey guy, is more arrogant because he thinks he's the best in everything. Matter of fact, after T.D. Jakes anointed him, he did come out and say he don't need anointing from anybody because he's so blessed anyway. He's the most blessed prophet living is what he said. I heard him say in one video. Now you ask yourself, if T.D. Jakes was really a bishop and a man of God, first of all, he wouldn't have been hanging around P. Diddy, right? Second of all, he damn sure wouldn't be anointing these two clowns who don't know nothing about scripture, period. 